How do you get to Carnegie Hall? Well, of course, it's practice, practice, practice. But let's be honest, that's not too helpful if you don't know how to practice. If you just sit there and run through things, even if you do it for hours, you're not going to make much progress. Have I done that? Yes. Is it tempting? Yes. Am I quite sure that everybody does that at least sometimes? Yes. But it's good to try to avoid. And you can actually get a lot more done in a lot less time if you think logically and carefully about how to tackle things. So let's take a look at some ways to get efficient work done without banging your head against the wall. This is going to be a super quick crash course just to get you started, and I'll have you out of here in under 10 minutes. Pinky swear. When I start a session, I like to do a diagnostic pass through a piece or a passage. I remember when I was a kid and I went to the dentist, they would give me this purple stuff to swish around in my mouth before my exam. The purpose was to reveal areas of my teeth that needed more attention so that they could be addressed. Same thing here. Play something through and record it. Check the recording after the run and make a note of the things that need work. Bonus points if you take literal notes instead of just trying to remember everything. You don't need to try to prove yourself as a big brain giga chad just to get through a practice session. Now, we need to actually figure out what kind of work we need to do. If we have a problem with rhythm but we're just practicing for intonation, we're not actually gonna fix everything we need to fix. So, let's talk about a few things to keep in mind. If it's a rhythmic issue, use a metronome. Don't just say, oh, I held this too long, I'll just remember it for next time. Not gonna fly. Either you'll forget or you'll be using too much mental energy remembering that consciously that you're not gonna be able to focus on the other things that you need to. Start the metronome off at the actual tempo, and then gradually begin dividing it so that the beats become less and less frequent, like the way I was taught to practice the second movement of Beethoven 5. Start at 84, it's in 3 8 so get comfortable at 84, and then divide by 3 to be 28, and you get one beat per bar, then by 2 for one beat every two bars. Work with a metronome until you can reliably get everything placed where it needs to be, even with very infrequent beats. If it's an intonation issue, you need to figure out what kind of intonation issue it is. If it's in position, pay careful attention to the spacing between your fingers. Then, take your fingers off the cello, bring them to your device, and hit the like and sub buttons on this video. After you take care of that, go back to the instrument. Now, you need to log a data point in your head. That is, relative to the other notes, did you play something too high or too low? Give conscious thought to that question and maybe even say the answer out loud. Once you know the direction you need to adjust in, find the exact spot on the fingerboard. Then, practice getting there in context. Whatever it is, start slowly. You want to suss out how much of a change you need to make from what you were doing before and really notice the physical sensation when you make that change. How does it feel in my fingers? Do I have to adjust my elbow, my shoulder, anything like that? Notice everything. Now if it's a shift, you gotta look in two places, left side and right side. Shifts don't happen in a vacuum. You need to shift with the bow. Like before, figure out if you're over or under shooting it. With this information, you can begin to plan out not only the motion of the shift in your left hand, but how you're going to coordinate it in the bow. Know if you're going to do it on an up bow or a down bow, and where in the bow you want to be throughout the shift. Practice this slowly to get it into your muscle memory. With this intonation stuff, I think it's a good idea to let it sink in for a bit after you've practiced it. Recently, I picked up some boneless, skinless chicken thighs at Costco, not sponsored, because they had a good deal. And I prepped some of them by putting everything into a mixture of soy sauce, teriyaki sauce, seasonings, all that good stuff. Because I know it's going to become better with marination. Same goes for a lot of work at the cello. Let it marinate for a little while, work on other stuff that you got to take care of in your repertoire, and circle back later. Let's talk sound now, the quality of your tone. If your sound isn't what you want it to be, figure out why. Remember that there are three main variables in the bow that affect how much sound you make and what kind of sound it is. Contact point, weight, and bow speed, or BS. Except it's not BS. Contact point is where you are in relation to the bridge, how close or far. Weight, obvious. Bow speed, obvious. Each one of these things affects your sound. If your sound is scratchy, at least one variable is messed up. Try keeping your contact point the same, but using a slower bow and or less weight. Or if there's too much core to the sound, move away from the bridge a little bit, use less weight, and experiment with the bow speed. Regardless of what you decide on, have a plan for how you're going to get the specific color of tone that you want. When it comes to contact point, sometimes you'll need to travel closer to or farther away from the bridge to make a contrast. Notice what you need to do with your wrist to make that happen, and practice it. Use your hand to make subtle bow angle changes to help guide you in the right direction. 
Those angles depend based upon if you're doing up bow or down bow and what string you're on. Get in front of a big mirror and use the scientific method to find what angle you need for your particular purposes. And like with everything else in this video, once you've practiced that, put it in for marination, go to the next thing in your practice session, and circle back later. Okay, music. The reason we do this. What happens when there's not a technical problem, but a musical one? Maybe the phrase doesn't sound like you want it to, or perhaps you realize that something didn't match the sheet music. By the way, you should always have the sheet music readily available during practice and usually visible. If you don't, it's easy to forget things that are printed and you can end up with a distorted interpretation. Plus, how are you going to be able to take notes of what bars you have to fix when you're listening back to a practice recording? Anyway, if you're anything like me, you've been using your vocal cords way longer than you've been playing cello, and you use them every day. I bet you don't even think about vocal technique when you're talking, or even singing unless you're a trained vocalist. The voice is your easiest way to come to an interpretation. Record yourself singing what you want, listen back, try to replicate it on the cello and record it, listen back, rinse and repeat until you have the phrasing you want. The point of all of this is that everything needs to be done mindfully. Think about the music, think about your body, think about the instrument, and think about how these things can be interrelated. Don't repeat yourself without thinking. Work to diagnose the problem, whether it's a physical thing you need to change, or a musical thing, or whatever it may be. Figure out what it is, and with this new knowledge, then you can get to work fixing it. Is this going to solve every problem that comes up in cello practice? No! But can these be some helpful starting points for you? Of course. Now this was mostly intended for people who play cello, but what if you're an adult who doesn't, but who wants to start? Ooh, I have a course for you! All the info you need to get started, even if you've never played an instrument before, and even if you don't know how to read music. It's available at the address shown on screen, or at the link in the description. I know I've been a little bit of a strict teacher in this video, but I promise it's done with love. I want everybody who's watching to live up to their full potential as a musician, and I want to help you do that. And if you've made it this far in the video, I just want to say thank you so much for watching. And if you're still hungry for more cello and music related content, I cordially invite you to check out these videos here. Thank you so much, and I can't wait to see you next time.